At last week's PDC in Toronto, we met up with David Hayden. He's the man responsible for getting the seafloor mining sector going when he launched Nautilus Minerals. Now he's back with a new initiative. It's called Deep Green Resources. And like Nautilus, the company is looking to mine off the ocean floor. If he does it, it will be the first company to successfully do this commercially. So we caught up with him to speak about some of the challenges he may face. Yes, this is Deep Green Resources. I have basically left Nautilus two years ago and I've been selling off the stock to finance this venture privately. Uh, we're down in deeper waters now. We're now looking at 5,000 metres on the seafloor in international waters. International waters. So how do you go about getting permits for that? Well, it's a whole new twist, isn't it? Uh, international waters are controlled by a body. It's a, an autonomous body of the United Nations. And they, in fact, they control an area about 40% of the world's surface, in fact, and all the resources therein. And until we started Nautilus, those resources didn't have a value because people couldn't see that you could commercially extract minerals from the seafloor. Clearly, they do now. So we're looking at a permit of about 75,000 square kilometres of ocean floor. That's about the size of Scotland. What are you looking uh, to find? Well, there's vast, vast deposits there. We're down on the flat abyssal plains, and what's down there are these nodules. They're like golf balls or potatoes in a muddy field. And they've got about 1.3% nickel, about 1.1% copper, 0.2 cobalt, and uh, about 30% manganese. You kind of touched upon this. There's already great challenges to mining uh, above ground. I can't imagine what you encounter uh, you know, below sea level. Well, you're right. Uh, everywhere people are going these days, there's challenges. You might have a challenge going into the Congo as far as political stability. Right. You might have a challenge here in Canada or Alaska with the, with the weather and climates like Red Dog and uh, Diavec mine up in the ice fields. Uh, you might have a challenge in the Andes, 4,000 metres above sea level where you've got to build a 350 kilometre pipeline. I mean, engineers are incredible what they're doing on land. If you stop and think about it, guys on land sink shafts down through solid rock to get to all bodies. And they might go down two kilometres through a solid rock. Clearly it's much easier to put a pipe two kilometres through seawater. We can do it in two days. They can take two years. The guys with the big open cut mines on land, they might be two or three years of stripping away the rock to get access to their ore body. We pull up at this deposit in the middle of the ocean and we want to go down 5,000 metres. It sounds a lot. Five days and we're in production. Put the pipe to the seafloor and we're in production. So where do you find the miners specialised for this? Well, you're right. It's a crossover of technologies. There's guys on land that are good at uh, mechanical things. Obviously, the dredging industry, they take two billion tonnes a year off the seafloor. They're masters of materials handling from the seafloor. The oil and gas sector, they drink drill, uh, drill as well, but they also trench uh, you know, probably two or 300 kilometres of seafloor every year to lay their pipes in it. And the telecommunications industry takes uh, telecom cables from country to country across the seafloor. So if you bring all those skills together onto a project like this, the skills are there. Uh, we just finance up and bring the engineers in and start developing. Okay, so when can we expect uh, mining operations to begin? Well, step one, Daniela, okay. we've got to take this project to market, raise the capital. Uh, we're looking at going to market in September this year. Okay. We'll come out of the chute just after the holidays. Uh, we're looking at a minimum $100 million raising. And then we'll just go through the standard engineering procedures of environmental studies, of course, metallurgy test work, engineering design. Clearly more capital will be needed later, but at a higher price. Right, I can imagine you might have some protests from environmental groups. Well, you're right. Clearly we've got to look at the environment where we are, on land or on the seafloor. Until we came along, there was no alternative. Uh, the environmental groups just looked at land, places like the Andes where, where they're mining copper. Now they've got a choice. Uh, do we want to get our metals from the seafloor or from land? Um, our view of the seafloor is easier. We're not deforesting rainforest to access the, the deposits. Clearly there's no Aboriginal or native title issues. Um, we don't have to build railway lines and, and towns. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, positives on the environment. But you know, we can do the right thing and do the environmental impact study. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Danielle. For Kitco News, I'm Daniela Cambone. Stay tuned to kitco.com for all your precious metals information.